Robert Seeley Elementary School this morning for Fire Prevention Week for 1987. We hope to make a training tape of the obstacles that we do today and some of the props that we set up so the other firefighters can learn to do fire prevention in the city and the county of Imperial. County Fire Department, I'm the Fire Prevention Officer. The gentleman you see over on the camera is Tony Marino. He's our senior firefighter and senior firefighter Charlie Seaman. You are all going to be part of a training tape today. We're going to make a training of this particular exercise we do today and pretty soon we'll send you a little tape and you'll be able to see yourselves on TV. First thing I'd like to start off with this morning is some of the things that have been happening in Southern California which are a real great concern to the firefighters in Imperial County. Number one, October 1st at 0742 in the morning, we had a major earthquake in Los Angeles in a place called Whittier, California. And it was a 6.1 magnitude. That was enough to crumble buildings, that was enough to knock cars off, off their sidewalks, enough to knock trailers off their uh, supports. So, we had three people killed that would have never been killed if they only would have done what they were trained to do. Number one, the first thing they did after the earthquake is they ran outside. This happened to be a college campus young lady and she ran underneath an awning that supported a carport and it collapsed and killed her. The other gentleman that we had, he ran out of a building and the front wall of the building came down a little bit and fell on him and killed him. So we don't want this to happen to us. Today we'll talk a little bit about that. Then on October 3rd, we had an aftershock in Whittier, California of 5.5 magnitude. That was just about the same as the one on October 1st, except one thing was different. It was at night. So now when everybody ran outside, they got displaced from their parents. They couldn't find mom and dad. So Imperial County has started a program this year and we call it the lifesaver tag. And I'll furnish these to the te teachers when I get a head count. What these are for is so we can type your name, your phone number, and your address on the inside and have these sewn to your shirts. So in case we do have an emergency where you could possibly get displaced, like you had to go to a fallout shelter or to the cafeteria and stay here away from your parents, we would be able to readily identify you and be able to call your parents and say, well, Johnny's safe, he's here at the school. Let's go through some of the items that we have to prepare for in an earthquake. Number one, if we're at school and the ground starts to shake, we want to get down on our hands and knees and get underneath our desk. The reason we do this is in case part of the community collapses or falls down, it will hit the desk and not hit you in the head. We also want to get away from the glass, the glass that shields one side of our walls, usually in school, because that glass has a tendency to flex and break, and when it falls down, it can cut you real bad. So, number one, we need to get down on our hands and knees. Number two, we need to stay away from windows, falling glass. Now, let's say this happens at home. We're going to do basically the same thing. We're going to drop to our hands and knees. We're going to holler for mom and dad to make sure they're okay, and we're going to protect ourselves getting underneath probably the kitchen table, a sturdy chair, a good bed frame, inside a closet. These are all good places to set in case of an earthquake. You'll find that just the few things are different in a fire. So, if we're at home, number one, yell out to mom and dad, are you okay? I'm sure they'll be yelling back. Number two, stay away from the windows. Stay away from any heavy objects in the house that could possibly fall off the wall. Make sure you protect yourself as readily as possible, because it's very important so we can help save your lives. My dad has to stay in bed. <laughs> your dad has to stay in bed? Well, then you, okay, then you need to call the fire department so we can come out there and help your dad, so we can get him outside. 911. I'll answer all questions afterwards, I promise. Okay.
Okay, the start of Fire Prevention Week, play it safe, plan your escape. This year we noticed the rise, the increase in deaths of children in house fires. Some of the reasons being is they didn't know how to get out of the house and they didn't know what to do to prepare for a fire. First thing you need to do to prepare for a fire is make sure that smoke detector in your house is working. Very, very important that that is working because that is your early warning sign when to get out of the house. Number two, you need to practice with mom and dad to practice to get out of the house. For instance, you go home this evening and you say, Mom, what if we had a fire inside the kitchen? Now, the kitchen area is one of the places most likely to be struck by fire. Number one, cooking's going on and everything's being heated up on the stove. So we have to be real careful around the kitchen. So you ask mom, how do you want me to get out? Where do you want me to go? She says, well, I want you to go to the front door and we'll meet out front at the big salt cedar tree. Always have a place to go, a central meeting point where we can keep everybody together. Because when the fire department arrives on scene, we'll blow our air horn and we'll hit our siren. If you're trapped inside your house, all you have to do then is when you hear that, is start knocking against the wall. And as you start knocking against the wall, firemen make a complete circumference of the building first before we attack the initial fire. And if we hear that knocking on the wall, you can bet we'll come right through that wall with no problem at all. Of course, it makes mom and dad a little mad when we do that because of the size of the hole we put in there. But it's to save your life, and I'm sure it won't matter after that. Okay, num number three, we must make sure everybody's outside. If you're the oldest in the family and you have a little brother and sister, you need to get a hold of them and get them out front with you also. Because when we drive up, if we see everybody out front, we can get inside that house, put that fire out that much faster, and do the least amount of damage possible. But if you don't practice for me at home, it makes it hard for me to save your life when I arrive in my fire engine. So tonight, practice with mom and dad. Ask them about the smoke detector. Let them set it off for you so you can actually see what it's going to sound like in a real fire. In a moment, I'm going to do a demonstration with smoke for you and show you how fast smoke can build inside your house. One of the other things we don't want to do this year, we have had some 200,000 acres in the state of California, our forest lands have been burned. One of the ones you're going to be hearing about quite a bit in the next week or so is the Palomar fire. It's at the observatory. It's been burning in San Diego, and that's part of the haze you see over the valley today is the smoke from that particular fire. It is controlled, but it is not contained. In other words, the firefighters have gone all the way around the fire, and we have a line around it, but we haven't put the fire out yet. Some of these fires were naturally set via lightning from the sky during a thunderstorm. But unfortunately, seven of the fires that we had this year are people playing with matches. If you find matches, if you want to play with matches, I want you to see your mom and dad. If they don't want to teach you how to play with matches, that's their prerogative. But if they want to, and you don't have a place, you be sure and come out to the Imperial County Fire Department and I'll let you light matches until you can't light them anymore. But it'll be under a control condition and you'll be able to see just about what it does and you won't get burned. Also, one of our major problems this year, one of, one of our major problems this year, just like he just said, have been these little devils right here. I belong to the arson task force and this year we set up at the border. We confiscated some 400 pounds of M80s. I'm going to set one of these off for you. And the reason I brought this little item is I was the one that responded to the little boy in the city of Imperial. He had this in his hand and it went off. He no longer has these three fingers. And while I'm fire prevention officer, that's not going to happen in Imperial County. Because I'm going to show you what these will do, and I want you to make sure that you never, ever play with them. Well, my dad just moved away and he likes the Well, even moving away, these can be 
become very dangerous because they throw sparks. And it can also move from the particular place that it's at and propel things like dirt, rocks, sand. When you'll notice me doing my demonstration this morning, I'll move on to the concrete, I'll set it off and I'll move away very quickly. But you'll notice one thing that I do is I'm not going to use a match to ignite this. Because every once in a while the match tends to flicker a little bit and it's only got a real unstable fuse here on the top. So I'll use a lit cigarette, I'll put it on the end and it'll travel much easier. But with a match, when the flame tends to creep up, every once in a while they go off when you're about this far away from them. And believe me, if it doesn't blow one of your fingers off, they're loud enough to where it could hurt your eardrum severely, the inside of your ear. Okay, so we never ever want to play with matches. And if we have any of these around, it's illegal to possess them. If a fire is caused, and I prove that it's caused from a firecracker, I'll be coming to see your mom and dad. I don't want any children's deaths or dismemberment in this year at all. We're going to bring our totals down to almost nil this year. There's a fire over here. Okay, one of the other things we want to talk about today is kitchen safety, which was already brought up. It's real important when you're out there with mom and dad in the kitchen. I know you like to help. I have a little son and daughter myself, and they love to wash dishes and do things like that. One of the problems is that you can reach the knobs on the sink. The water coming out of your water heater is hot enough to cause a first-degree burn. In some cases, it's possible to cause a second-degree burn. I'll give you another little example. We went to the city of Heber this year. I was riding the squad, and a young man had reached up and grabbed a pot of stew that was on the stove, and all he wanted to do was look over the top to see in. But unfortunately, Mom had this a little full, and when he did, it tipped over on him, and he had second and third degree burns from the top of his chest all the way down to the bottom of his feet. We this young man to date has gone through some 20 operations to try to repair the burns and it's very very painful and i don't want to see any of you have to go through that experience so when we're in the kitchen we want to do what mom tells us to do and that's not a place to play that's not a place to run our cars during cooking hours if you need to run your cars wait till mom's done with the dishes at night I'm sure she'll let you go in there and run your cars on the floor. But while mom's making dinner or dad's making dinner at night, I don't want you playing in the kitchen. It is just too dangerous. Okay, with that, what I'm going to show you right now is how smoke builds inside a house fire. And then I'm going to tell you some of the ways that you can take care of this smoke to help you get out of your room. I don't want anybody moving towards the smoke canister after I light it off. But I'm going to get behind it to show you that if at night, at like 3 o'clock in the morning, you had a fire, you wouldn't be able to see through this smoke at all. Now, we have a pretty nice breeze today, and it's going to be blowing the smoke away. But now you have to kind of pretend with me and pretend that this is in your house and this smoke is actually causing a fire.
go to an exit. We want to make sure we get out as quick as possible. Drop to our knees, stay low, near exit, central meeting point, in that order. And it's got to be that organized. In this particular case, when you start to move towards the door, yell for mom and dad, but in not a panic action. Mom, dad, I'm gonna go outside, we have a fire. The smoke detector will be going off, that beep, 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 that sound you hear, that's your cue to get out of the house. And what mom and dad need to do at night is actually get you in bed around nine o'clock and then set that off and see how you react. Because me telling you, and you doing it are two different things. That's why it's so important, so important to practice what I'm telling you. Okay, now the next demonstration is the one I'm really concerned about. I'm gonna have Charlie light up a cigarette for me and I'm gonna light this, this is called an M80. This is a illegal firework from Mexico. The other firework I have in here is a smoke bomb, but it is different in the way that it has two things. Number one, it says right on it, State Fire Marshal Office approved, safe and sane. If you'll notice the other one, it doesn't have any writing on it at all, it's just a piece of red paper filled with uh, plastics on the end, and inside here is what we call black powder. Anytime black powder is wrapped and put underneath the charge, when it goes off, it explodes. Now, if I put this in the dirt right here, most of you up front would get pitted from the dirt. I'm going to do it on the concrete today, and I want you to watch the reaction. Don't take your eyes off this cherry bomb once I light it. Crash, fire, and rescue on an airport. 
It takes care of the large aircraft that come in with a lot of fuel and have accidents. We can take this particular piece of equipment out and with one man put out 1,200 gallons of water a minute. It also has the capacity of foam. It's a special agent that we add inside the water that actually seals over the tops of the fuel so we can't have any more fire. For the next demonstration, I want you to stay seated and with this wind, there might be a little water drift this way, but it will only be over spray. There won't be any stream towards you, because he'll be aiming towards me. So everybody stay seated. We'll move to the ox. We'll fire it up, and you guys can all watch us. Just watch the two front cannons on the top. Go to white, Charlie. We are observing a fire drill put on by Ben Holt School in preparation for fire prevention week. We notice the orderly manner in which they're coming out and most of the kids are relatively quiet. It looks like a good exercise in time. We're looking at about 60 seconds. Good morning, 
I'm Lieutenant George Neves with the Imperial County Fire Department. You just witnessed the Ben Holtz Elementary School fire drill to set off fire prevention week. We hope with this tape that we'll be able to train other firefighters to give these fire prevention demonstrations. went out. 
So now everybody went out in the street basically the same way they did on October 1st, except this next time when they got outside, the kids couldn't find their parents. They got displaced. So Imperial County has started a program to take care of that particular little problem. They're called Lifesaver Tags. And the teachers will give me a number of all you people, I'll give some to you. What these do is we can put your name and phone number in them. And then if it happens here at school, what teacher will do is staple it to your shirt. If it happens at home, we want mom and dad to do basically the same thing. These tags are made out of cloth, so they can be sewn in. But if need be, just staple it on your shirt. So if you do get in this place and you can't find mom and dad, when my firefighters arrive, we'll be able to take you home. And at least call your parents and tell them you're safe. These are available at the county fire department. Okay, now let's get into a little bit of fire prevention. Our theme this year is play it safe, plan your escape. And it's real, real important that this is practiced at home with mom and dad. It's just like your schoolwork. Two and two equals four. So fire prevention equals four also. So if you practice it at home, you're going to do well. If you don't practice it, when the real thing happens, you're going to be nervous. Okay, we have a fire in our house. The smoke detector is now going off. It's time for you to drop to your knees, stay as low as possible, and move to the nearest exit. Whether that's a back door, a front door, a window, some place where you can get outside and away from the fire. What you're going to find is if you practice this, you must have a central meeting point outside. The big tree in the front yard, uh, the sidewalk, the neighbor's house. Have a place where you're going to meet. Now, tell mom and dad, well, mom, if there's a fire in the kitchen, where do you want me to go? If, if there's a fire in the bedroom, where do you want me to go? If you practice this at home, you're going to save your own life. But if you do get trapped inside a house, when we pull up to your house, what we'll do, what we always do, is we shoot that big air horn and we hit the siren once. That's not because it's sticking and we're having fun. That's your signal as you're trapped inside the house to start tapping on a wall. Start to knock on that wall. That's when you want to start to yell a little bit so my firefighters can find you. We can go through a wall with nothing flat. We have some saws that will go right through it. Mom and Dad doesn't make them too happy on the size of the hole, but if we save your life, it makes it a little bit better for us in the long run. So, we want to make sure we don't panic. We drop to our hands and knees. We move to the nearest exit, and we have a central meeting point outside. Real, real important. Okay, move on to a little bit of the haze that you see over Imperial Valley today. This haze is caused by a fire that is burning out of control in a place called Palomar. It's up by San Diego. Some 3,700 acres have been burned so far. We have the fire controlled, but not contained. That means we have a perimeter all the way around the fire, but we haven't actually put the fire out right now. Imperial County was called. We assembled a strike team, which is five engines and 15 men to send to San Diego. We were canceled en route because the big bombers, the big airplanes, can come down in that area and bomb real easy and put the fire out. So it makes it easy for them to get in and out. Unfortunately, the cause of the fire in Palomar, unlike the ones up north, some 200,000 acres were burned, was caused by a match. Now, we don't know whose match it was yet, but this is what I'm here to tell you. I don't want it to be any one of us playing with matches. Matches are very, very dangerous. You're going to get to see today a demonstration using matches. You'll see a demonstration using a firecracker. And you'll see a demonstration using smoke. These are not to make you nervous as a so. So you'll learn and see how this stuff builds inside a house. Also, today we want to discuss fireworks. I brought some fireworks with me today that we confiscated. I'm part of the arson task force, and we set up this year in July to pick off illegal fireworks. This is a firework that is safe and sane. You'll notice the writing on the outside of it. It also has the state fire marshal seal. These are approved in the state of California to be used. 
The other item I brought today is an illegal firework. This is called an M80. And last year I responded into the city of Imperial, one of your classmates, and he had one of these in his hand. And it went off. He's missing these three fingers now. And while I'm fire prevention officer, that's not going to happen to any of you. We have some 400 pounds. If you really feel the need that you need to light off fireworks, I want you to come out to the fire department. We'll do it in a controlled setting for you. You'll notice the day when I light these fireworks off, I'll be wearing my helmet and gloves. Because you never know what these are going to do. These are predictable. These, you know, are just going to put off a nice little colored flame and set you on the ground. When I light this one off this morning, it's going to explode. Okay, so we want to make sure that we don't have any illegal fireworks at the house. If you do have them, you don't know what to do with them, bring them to the fire station. If not, I want you to give them to your parents and make sure your parents keep them. Do not try to go outside and ignite one of these on your own. Because you will be losing fingers or you could be severely burned. Unfortunately, these, after they combust, leave a small amount of fire. And in dry grass like this out here, it could get, get the grass on fire and eventually travel towards the roof. Same way at home. You light one of these off, and it's inside some tall grass. It could light that grass on fire, and we could have trouble with your home. Not only will you be in a lot of trouble, but mom and dad will be in a lot of trouble also. Because they're responsible for any damage you need the fireworks do. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about this fire prevention and fire safety, why we're here. The reason we're here is to make sure you stay safe. And the only way we can do that is to demonstrate to you some of the most important items about fire safety. The first demonstration I'm going to do is with a smoke bomb. This is exactly the type of smoke that your smoke detector is going to sense when it first goes off. This is the color of the smoke that precedes a full-blown house fire. It starts out with a nice white celery smoke. When you see that type of smoke, I want this to be your exit in your mind to put this into gear and say, okay, it's time to get out of the house and I'll just be out front. If mom and dad aren't home, you might have to take little brother and sister and get them out of the house also. So we all have responsibility when we're inside the home. I want you to watch it real close. Well, you want to move out and we'll 
get down on the ground and crawl out of the house as soon as possible. One of the other things I want you to remember and keep on your mind all the time is the little adage we have, stop, drop, and roll. If your clothes ever catch on fire, all you do is get on the ground, cover your hands, and roll all the way over and all the way back. You make sure that your clothes are out. You don't beat it out with your hands. Synthetic clothing is the type I'm wearing is part cotton and part synthetic, like it's about nylon. It will not combust and hold a flame, but it melts. So if I was to put my hand on it and pat it out, it would melt it to my hand. It also melts it onto your skin. So we want to remember to stop, drop, and roll. Two ways out of the house. If we have an earthquake, that's the time to put this in gear and say, I want to get down, I want to get underneath my desk. If I'm at home, I want to get underneath the kitchen table. And I want to make sure myself, my brother and sister, and my parents are okay. With those messages in mind, God bless you, and I'll see you in January for a special